Then he ended with, uh, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you must save this unfortunate boy. Just because the district attorney has proven he has done wrong once does not mean he has lost his soul. Oh. <laughs> Hold soul, he yelled as quickly as he could, but the damage had been done. Then Dad got up and in his inimitable dry way remarked, our worthy colleague seems to think he is running a golf school. And from the way the truth has been knocked about by his witnesses, I'm forced to agree. However, I am afraid that since eloquence is the only thing that could possibly save Pedro Despier from justice, my worthy colleague, the attorney for the defense, has flubbed his drive and lost his sole hope. <laughs> well, it was all over then but the shouting. Mr. Pedro Despier was convicted in a couple of hours. Much to the credit of my honored father and the next governor of the state, Mr. John Manson Clay. <laughs> More coffee, Jack. No thanks. Cordial. Free walk. I want to speak to John about Lem Wheeler tonight, and I prefer having a clear head. And offer a more logical argument than the last time. You'll come to see it my way yet. Maybe. But it'll take a lot of talk. Lem Wheeler's a friend of yours and of mine. But that stock deal of his was crooked, and he ought to be sent up. There are some hundreds of old men and women who saw their entire life savings flying through the window. Sure, uh, no, 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 that's all I hear around this place. And now you, Jack Keene, of all people bringing up that subject, after the perfectly beautiful dinner I fed you. <laughs> Forgive me. I wanted to speak to John about Lem. Uh, that was really why I came tonight. Oh, really? I thought it was I. No. Although you're the reason for my never having married, I came tonight to talk with John. All right. Talk to him. Oh, Bob. Yes. Would you entertain your old mother? Why, I'd love to. Say, Jack. If you're going to go into a conference with Dad over old Lamb Wheeler, you'd better hurry, because he's taking Mother Theater tonight, you know. No, I didn't know it. Yes, a big night. We thought perhaps you'd go with us. Sorry, I can't. I have an engagement. Ah, Flossy of the Follies, huh? No, Tilly of the Toilers. A meeting of the Labor Committee at the New Amsterdam Club. I think he's lying. Probably. You know, them brunettes ain't to be trusted. Oh, and besides, they do say that... Be kind, dear lady. What? That there's a certain well-known actress. There are many well-known actresses. Oh, but not as well-known as this one, around 68 Washington Square. Uh-oh. To me, that had all the earmarks of a nasty crack. It's the office, Mr. Clay. It's Mr. Wordsley. Oh, out again? All right. Thanks. Hello, Steve. All right, I'll attend to it. Yes, I'll be right down. And there you are. Meaning no theater? I guess you don't even have to ask me. It's the Nate extradition case. You forgive me? Oh, I suppose so. But I'm getting a bit fed up. Poor abused Mater. Listen, fair one. We let the lady of my heart go hang, and you and I'll hit all the high spots and let the lawyers and law go hang. Not tonight, little one. You're much too young. Oh. But then, if Lothario Jack were to volunteer... What would happen to the labor situation at the Keene Company Steelworks? Or Tilly the Toiler. We can all go to blazes. I'm going to stay home and read Boccaccio. I'm sorry. She's poor flushing. But the only Italian she knows is C.C. and Michelangelo, and maybe the fruit man down at the corner. Be late. Three or four o'clock. May not get home till morning. Uh, I'll drop you, Dad. I'm going over to Peg. All right. Will you let me off at my club? I'll sit in the rumble. Oh, come inside with us. We've lots of room.
I'm sorry I have an engagement. It really is important. Oh, I dare say. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, Jack. I can't go into Lem's case with you tonight. Would you mind dropping down to the office in the morning? Anywhere you say. But I would like to go over his case with you. Will you come loaded for bear? I will. Good night, Esther. Good night, Jack. I'll see you in the morning, darling. Bye, Mom. I won't be late. Any messages, Drugger? Yes, sir. Miss Weston phoned. She said she'd be able to keep that appointment with you after all. She said you would understand. Very well. I won't need you anymore tonight, Drugger. You understand? Perfectly, sir. You're very adequate. The first duty of a gentleman's man is always to remember to forget. That'll be all. Be here in time for breakfast in the morning. At ten. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. I thought I told you never to come here without letting me know first. Why, give me a key, my love. Suppose someone had been here when you opened that door. Tilly the toiler, for instance? Don't be a fool. Oh, I am somewhat of a fool, aren't I? But not fool enough to swallow that story about the business meeting. Not after all that gossip I picked up. Esther, listen to me. Ah, don't lie, Jack. You lie very badly. To me, anyway. But I tell you, I... I have... know you're expecting someone. A business associate. A tall man with long black whiskers. Or are they red? Tell me is his name. At times, you're exasperating. Oh, you should know, my love. You've seen me in all my moods and tenses. The present one is not at all becoming. Oh, I know. It's my dress. I'll slip into something more restful. I'll slip into these. You've always liked them. Esther, I want you to go home. What for? Didn't you hear John say that he wouldn't be home until the small wee hours? Oh, if anybody should drop in here, you can introduce me as your cousin Annabelle from Minneapolis. Does Tilly know that you have a cousin Annabelle from Minneapolis? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, don't let's quarrel. I have no idea of leaving here until I've seen Tilly. I've heard so much about her. I want to meet her. You're acting like a perfect fool. Oh, but I always was. Principally about you, my dear. You'll not get away with it. I won't be hounded.
phoning someone? There. There'll be no phoning. Anybody who wants to call, will call in person. You're quite capable, aren't you? I'm capable. Capable of most anything. And make no mistake about that, Jack. You're positive there's no other way out. I must go to Washington. Uh, yes, sir. You know those District of Columbia rulings? Nate's case is slated for tomorrow morning. If it comes up, you'll never get him up there. I'm afraid you're right. Well, there's no one in the office can handle the extradition. I'm sorry, Chief, but I'm afraid you're going to have to hop the next train. All right, Simon Legree. Thank you. Jack's not at the club. They say he just dropped in for a moment and left. Tries a pardon, will you, Bob? Oh, uh, Wordsley. Yes, sir. Well, uh, take care of the Sarah Mann's case and look into the Lem Wheeler matter further. I don't want to be rough on him, but make sure that things are as bad as they seem. He's an old friend, and while I'll prosecute, I don't want to persecute him. I understand, sir. All right. Thank you. They can't get Jack's apartment. They say his phone's out of order. That's too bad. He doesn't live far from Peg. I'll drop over and tell him if you want me to. Will you do that, Bob? Tell him about this Washington matter, and I'll see him the day after tomorrow. And uh, break the sad news to your mother. Well, that won't be so hot. You know, you were supposed to go to that musical tomorrow night. She sort of had her heart set on it. Well, you'll have to unset it. Well, okay, Governor. Take care of yourself and bring home the bacon. I'll get Nate extradited if it can be done, but I don't know. Come on, Steve. Bye, Bob. Oh, uh, what about your clothes? I've got a bag pack. We'll change on the train. I'll see you in a couple of days. <laughs> Come on, Governor. Great boy, Bob. <laughs> yes. Has he passed the state bar examination yet? Yes, he has. Well, if he's anything like his father, he'll make a great lawyer. Are you telling me? You couldn't expect it to go on forever. It just isn't in the cards. And besides, you have a husband. Darn decent chap. I've felt pretty low down at times. And what about your son? What if Bob should find out? Bob is not my son. What? He's John's son by his first wife. She died when he was born. We were married a few months later. On a rebound, I suppose you call it. John had some foolish idea about his son having a real mother's influence. It brought him up to think that I was his mother. A mother's influence, eh? So don't moralize to me about my duty to my family. It's a bit thick. Very well. If you'd prefer my being frank, we're through. I'm sick and tired of the whole mess. I never gave you a vow of constancy. And besides, there is someone else. How's that for simplicity? Most concise. Clearly and ably expressed. It would do credit to John. I was always noted for my clarity. I don't know. Somewhere, anywhere, for a while. Nathario flees. Out of the city and out of her life. Exactly that. Make it more like a French novel, Jack.
Mother, what in the world are you doing here? Hello, Bob. Where's Jack? He's not here. Well, how did you get in, then? Well, I, uh... Mother! No, I found him like that. Why, this is yours. What's it doing here? What was there between you and Jack? Answer me! Tell me! All right, Bob. I'll tell you. I loved him. And he said we were all through. That he was going away and I... Killed him. Oh, Mother. I think of poor Dad. Oh, you won't tell him. You won't give me up. No, no, of course not. But you've got to get out of here right away. That's it. I've got to go. Wait a minute. Did anyone see you come up here? No. The elevator man? I didn't use the elevator. I never did. Oh, Bob, let me go. Wait. We've got to get all of your things out of here. Everything. Oh, I never thought of that. We've got to get them out of here right away. Can you remember them all? I think so. Good. Put them in the bag. You got everything? I think so. You mustn't think. You've got to be sure. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, come on, Bob, let's go. Wait a minute. You can't go out the front way. Isn't there a service entrance? Yes, through the kitchen. This way. <laughs> Here now, go downstairs quietly and don't let anyone see you. Slip out the back entrance and take the subway. Don't take a taxi. But aren't you coming? I can't, not now. I've got too much to do. What do you mean? Fingerprints to clean up, a motive to establish. I've got to make it look as though Jack caught a burglar and was killed by him. Oh, Bob, I'm so afraid. Oh, I don't doubt it, but pull yourself together. We'll put it over. Come now. Why, uh, Mr. Clay. Hello, Druggett. What's happening, sir? Why, uh, Mr. Keene just stepped out. He, uh, was just playing a little joke on him. A joke? Oh, I see. He asked me if I saw you to tell you he wouldn't need you anymore this evening. Yes. He told me so himself. He must have forgotten, sir. Excuse me. Joke, eh? Well, don't you think you've carried it rather far, Mr. Clay? Oh, 
Well, Sam, and you two gentlemen, come in here, please. What is it, Leo? Will you please look in the bedroom? You killed him, sir. Did I? Leo, have you phoned to the police? No. The phone is smashed. You'd better run down the corner and see if you can find one. How did it happen? I don't know, sir. I came in and found Mr. Clay mussing up the furniture. He said he was playing a joke on Mr. Keene. A joke? Yes, sir. Then I went into the bedroom and I found Mr. Keene lying on the floor, dead. But I... Daddy Clay. Hello, Peg. Did you see Bob? He wouldn't see me. He sent me out a note, though. He wants me to break our engagement. Said the notoriety must be killing me. And? What do you think, Daddy Clay? Good girl. Perhaps he'll explain to you. He hasn't yet. I don't understand it. Perhaps he can't explain. What do you mean, Mrs. Clay? We are all adults. I see no reason for beating around the bush. What could have been his motive? You mean there was another girl? I didn't say that, Peg. You know, even if he told me that himself, I don't think I believe him. Bob should consider his father. As district attorney, it's his duty to prosecute. Yes. But I've resigned. You're going to take up his case yourself? Defend him? Of course I am. He's my boy. I know him. This morning, I'll get the truth and the whole truth from him. As soon as he knows he's not talking to the district attorney, he'll tell me everything. His tongue was tied before, eh, Mother? Yes. Yes, of course. Well, excuse me, Mr. Clay. Bob is outside. Have him brought in, Steve. Yes, sir. I think you two better clear out. Bob and I have some business to transact. Oh, but I think we should stay. I think sh we should hear what Bob has to say. No, oh, dear, I think Bob would rather talk to me alone. All right. Hello, Peg. First time I ever remember you having to be dragged anywhere to meet me. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Listen, Bob. You haven't told anyone yet whether you did or did not kill Jack. The papers have built up quite a case, but they're only the papers. I want you to know, dear, that whether you did or did not, Nothing is different between us. It's like you, Peg, to say that. You're that kind. Thanks. I, I guess you'd better go now. Come on, Peg. I'm afraid you're in for a good grilling with your father. Don't worry, Mother. I'm not afraid of Dad. Good 
morning, Mr. District Attorney. Call me Dad, son. All right, man. Good morning, Dad. Sit down, Bob. Thanks. Now then, open up. To whom? You or the district attorney? I'm no longer the district attorney. I don't understand. I resigned this morning. But you... You didn't think that I'd find myself in the position of prosecuting you, did you? Oh, Dad. You must remember my boy, you're a clay. The clays always stick together. But your prospects, the governorship. What in thunder have my prospects got to do in this mess? We must consider you, reality. My prospects don't hold any weight in that balance. I see. That makes it just a little bit tougher. Just the other way. It simplifies everything. I'm not a half-bad lawyer defending you. I'll make some of these boys around here sit up. Now then, first of all, did you or did you not kill Jack Keane? You know the evidence. What do you think? I think you did. Well then. That's only the beginning. Why did you kill him? Come on, answer my question. If I did kill Jack Keene, the motive was something I can't discuss. Not even with you, Dad. What? I'm sorry, Dad. That's the way it is. I never heard of such a thing. How in blazes do you expect me to defend you? I don't know, I'm sure. I told you it was going to be tough. Son, you're mad. Perhaps that would be a good defense. But don't I'm you... I'm sorry, Dad. Outside of your mother, you're the only thing on earth that I care about. I've held you on my knee. I've nursed you when you were ill. One time you nearly passed out with typhoid. I prayed a little then. We've been hunting and fishing together and we've had a lot of fun. Lots of times I've been mighty proud of you. Bob, Whatever your motives were for killing Jack, tell me. No matter how low down and shameful you think they were, trust me. Tell me. I have nothing to say, sir. But why? In heaven's name, why? Bob, it's I, your old man. Surely there's nothing you can't tell me. You know that. You're trying me too far, son. How can I defend you if you don't confide in me? I don't know. Perhaps it would be better if you didn't. Bob, you listen to me. I told you I'd resign, that I was no longer district attorney. Well, that is true, but that letter has not yet gone to the governor. If you don't confide in me, if you don't let me help you, if you don't tell me the truth, you'll find me on the other side of the fence. I'll get that letter back from Wordsley. I'll prosecute you. I'll send you to prison. All right, go ahead. Send me to prison. Pastor, Peg, Wordsley, come in here, please. Bob has seen fit not to confide in me. He will tell me nothing. I've informed him that unless he does, I'll withdraw my letter of resignation and prosecute him as any stranger would. I'll let the law take its course and protect the interests of the state. But I... Bob! 
Bob, please say something. Tell your father. I... I can't, Peg. Wedgley? Yes, sir. Hold up that letter of resignation and send Bob back where he belongs. People, this is Robert Clay. The defendant will approach the bar for sentence. Have you any legal cause to show why sentence should not now be pronounced? None, Your Honor. Robert Clay, you have been duly tried by jury and found guilty of the crime of murder in the second degree. You having shown no legal cause why sentence should not be pronounced, I now sentence you for the crime of which you stand convicted. You are remanded to the custody of the sheriff to be by him delivered to the warden of the state penitentiary, there to be confined for the rest of your natural life. I'm sorry, Bob. It's all right, Mother. It's just what I expected. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, Peg. Oh, Bob. Come on, Dad. I got what was coming to me. You did exactly right. by any chance happen to be home about uh, three o'clock this afternoon, would you? I'd like to see you. Something very important. What for? Oh, uh, several things. How about it? I don't know what you're talking about. Of course I won't be home at three. Very well. Much better for me, then. I'll be home at three. Mr. Keene's apartment. I haven't closed it up yet. You'd better come down to see me. You see, I haven't told all that I know. Just who really killed Keen, for instance. I'll expect you at three. talking about in court. Yeah, a bit curious, eh? Naturally. My son has been sent to prison. Sad. Your husband's son, you mean. How did you know that? Oh, that isn't all that I know, Mrs. Clay. Why, you didn't think for a moment that that affair you had with Mr. Keene was kept from me, did you? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Now, let's not beat around the bush. Here's the whole thing in a nutshell. I was here the night that you so nonchalantly put a bullet into the back of Mr. Keene's handsome but rather dumb head. That's a lie. No, it isn't. Now sit down, and I'll tell you how it happened. I was here when your boy came in and watched from the pantry closet as he let you out the back way. 
Then I slipped out after you and came up the front. The rest you know. You heard me tell it on the witness stand. Now, how is that for an interesting anecdote? What do you expect to gain? Hmm. What do you suppose? Money. Maybe. You are a fool. How do you expect them to believe such a crazy story? You told a different one on the stand. You perjured yourself. There's a penalty for that. You have no substantiation for the story you just related to me. Oh, haven't I? No. I have all the letters that you wrote to Mr. Keene. If they won't believe my unsupported word, they will certainly believe them, won't they? All right. What do you want me to do? <laughs> That's better. Now we're getting together. Hard at it, eh? Yes, sir. Thanks to you, Warden. Criminal procedure, eh? You graduated in the law, didn't you? Yes, sir. I have a degree. I'm afraid it won't do me much good in here, though. Well, you never can tell. Stick right at it, and maybe you'll find some technicality that'll take you right out of here. I thought all the technicalities were expurgated, along with lock picking and safe blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I don't like this one. What's the matter with it? Well, read that. Stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Come on. You've just got to buck up. He is alive. Well. You'd have made a fine lawyer, Peg. And a better husband, Danny Clay. Here, young woman. You're spending altogether too much time here trying to buck me up. Oh, nonsense. Why, I'm a social butterfly. I'm even going out amongst them tonight. I think that's what Bob would like. Yes, I think he would. Do you find much uh, eyebrow lifting? Mm, some, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Oh, hello, Peg. Oh, hello, Mrs. Clay. Hello, dear. Are you going out? Why, why, yes. Oh, Rose called. She wants me to go over to the Gainsborough Galleries with her to look over uh, Steve White's paintings. Why, I thought that exhibit closed last Thursday. John, you're getting old. It's next week. Oh, well, perhaps you're right. May I drop you? The car's outside. No, thank you. You're going downtown, and I'm going uptown. Goodbye, John. Don't wait up for me. Good night, Daddy Clay. Good night, Peg. Thanks for coming in. What do you mean, thanks? Well, we don't talk about uh, things, except when you're here. Well, probably the subject is too close to Mrs. Clay, too. You know what I mean. Hmm. 
Probably. Well, have a good time tonight out amongst them. I'll try. Good night. Good night. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, here we are, once more in the little old rendezvous. Get the letters, please. No, oh, now, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Let me get you a scotch and soda. I don't care for anything to drink. You're getting awfully unsociable all of a sudden. You had one the last time you came. That was the last time. And this is the last time, too, eh? Yes. All right. You know, I'm going to miss these little tete-a-tetes. They've been most enjoyable. Run it, please. Bring me the letters. Let's get it over with. All right, all right. But don't be impetuous. It's gotten you into trouble at odd times. Sit down. Now, don't worry, my dear. You're going to get your precious letters all right. And I'll be good, too. But you must admit that you're a bit of a temptation. So you can hardly blame me for making up to you under the circumstances. No, I suppose not. It's all my own fault. And ladies that kill their sweeties and have their sons go to jail for them shouldn't be so particular. You know Bob isn't my son. Yes, I know. But he certainly acted like one, taking the blame and keeping his mouth shut, didn't he? Oh, I suppose so. Get me the letters. All right. Yours to command. There you go, impetuous as ever. There's a little matter of $5,000 to be attended to first. All right. Here it is. Thanks. Do you mind if I count it? Oh, no. Big pardon, sir. What is it, Charles? Miss Harper on the wire, sir. Oh, thanks.
Hello, Peg. Daddy Clay, listen. I've just found out something. Bob didn't kill Jack Keene. What are you talking about, Peggy? What are you up to? Look, come to Washington Square, to Jack Keene's apartment. Hurry, just as fast as you can. Five thousand green dollars. Guaranteed to be legal tender by our great and glorious country. I thank you. Now the letter. Now don't rush. You're going to get yourself into trouble rushing things someday. Suppose I told you that in looking over my accounts, I find that five thousand isn't enough for my needs. We made a bargain. I've paid it. I went through a great deal of trouble to get the money. So hand them over, please. You haven't answered my question. Do you really want me to? Uh-huh. If you go back on your bargain, I'd simply take the letters. I've rather a nasty temper when I'm aroused. Here they are. I was only fooling. Thanks. I'll count them and make sure they're all here. Oh, uh, Mrs. Allen isn't quite here. She wants you to come up. Oh, thanks. Has anyone come out in the last few minutes? Come out? What do you mean? Any of the tenants of the building. Why, no. Oh, uh, Mr. Wilcox just went out. No one else? No. Thanks. Oh, never mind. I'm waiting for someone. All right, Druggett. They seem to be all here. Light a fire for me. You're going to get rid of them without delay, huh? They've been in existence too long as it is. What is it, Peg? Oh, Daddy Clay, Bob is innocent. It's too bad. You didn't do that some time ago. It would have been much cheaper. Well, better late than never. Yes, sir. What did you want? Esther, what are you doing here? Tell me, what are you doing here? Why, I... What are I... those? Give them to me. Oh, please, please. Let me see them. I see. You and Jack Keene, huh? And because of this, you killed him. I don't know what you mean. Don't try to lie, Esther. Peg was here. She heard you and drug it. She knows the whole truth. And Bob knew it, too. To save you, he took the blame. And we know the truth at last. Before it's too late. What are you going to do? Do? What do you suppose? John, I'm your wife. Hmm. For you, for this, I set my boy, the thing I love best on earth, to prison. Oh, you've got to listen. Listen to what? What can you explain with all we know? Give me those letters. Give them to you? Yes, give them to me. No one's going to see them, you understand? No one's going to see them. Give me that gun. Daddy Clay! She deserved it. If anyone ever deserved it, she did. You remember the testimony that Miss Harper gave, don't you? Yes. 
She told you it was your wife that killed John Keene, not your son. Yes. It was an answer to a telephone call from Miss Harper that you went to Keene's apartment, wasn't it? Yes. And when you found your wife there, and she refused to give you those letters, you killed her, didn't you? No, I did not. I had no intention of harming her. It was an accident. Now, Miss Harper, from where you stood, could you see what took place in the bedroom? No, sir. And you did see the deceased stagger and fall to the floor? Yes, sir. What did you say when the defendant appeared from behind the curtain, revolver in hand? I said, Daddy Clay, she's dead. What did he say? Come on, answer. He said, if anyone deserved it, she did. What he meant was that he thought she deserved killing, wasn't it? I object. The prosecution is leading the witness. Objection sustained. That's all. Your witness. No cross-examination. They got the old boy dead to rights. Witnesses, the best motive in the world and everything. Dad, we've got but one chance. That's encouraging. What is it? Let me sum up. You? Take a chance on me, will you? Any time. Go ahead. Thanks. The state rests, Your Honor. The defense rests, Your Honor. How long will you gentlemen require for arguments? The defense is ready to present its case, Your Honor. I can sum up in a few minutes. Very well, you may proceed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is my first address. I'm just a fledgling lawyer, but a duly accredited member of the bar. And as such, privilege to speak, to plead with you for the life of the defendant, my father. You all know him. You know him as the district attorney of the county, a fearless prosecutor. You know him as a citizen. The political party of which he is a member has named him its prospective candidate for governor. And I know him as a father. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details of my early childhood. Needless to say, it was very happy. School, college, hunting and fishing trips with the defendant, wherein I learned to know him for the man he is. And he loved me. I was more to him than his modest wealth, his fame, his hopes. Then, ladies and gentlemen, a murder was committed. My father's wife was false to him. She chose another, a man about town. And when he tired of her, she killed him, shot him to death. It so happened I learned of her crime and was able to save her from her just deserts. Oh, I take no credit for assuming her crime. I thought she was my mother. And I knew that the knowledge of it would break the heart of the man I loved. My life was in no danger. I knew that the state could not prove premeditation on my part, and that the worst that would happen to me would be a prison sentence. But if my mother were brought to trial, it would mean her life. My father prosecuted me. With breaking heart, he demanded of 12 jurors that they condemn me, the thing he loved best in the world. He won, and I was condemned. You who have sons may know his feelings as I was led away. Then came the night the world tumbled about him in chaos. He learned the truth. The woman he had cherished was false. She had not only defiled his honor, his home, but she had permitted him to send his own son to prison for life for the thing she had done. I don't know whether John Clay killed that woman or not. I don't care. I only know that God reached down from his heaven and wiped from the face of the earth the supreme blot on all honor, truth, and love. Ladies and gentlemen, 
There is a law that transcends law, and it is up to you to decide whether John Clay shall be punished or not. Thank you. I told you he'd make a fine lawyer. I want to impress upon the witness the seriousness of this case. I want the truth and nothing but the truth. You understand? You realize that this young man's happiness is at stake, don't you? I do. You've known him for a long time, haven't you? Yes, I have. And on numerous occasions, you have told him that you loved him, haven't you? I have. And in spite of the fact that you know that his character is not above reproach, you still feel the same way? I do. Very well. The witness is yours. We admit the truth of the testimony is given. There will be no cross-examination. Oh, Dan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>